2016 Valvoline Motorsport Ireland Forest Rally Championship in association with the following sponsors. Forest Rally Championship roars back to life here in Mallow County Cork after a well-deserved break in the overall season and all competitors are raring to go to get back into the forestry. Jim Walsh Cork Forest Rally has drawn an impressive entry from the four corners of the country where competitors will have to take on over 60 kilometres of these top class stages. Based in the woods of the Bogara Mountains west of Mallow and County Cork, the Jim Walsh Cork Forest Rally features three exciting fast flowing stages, each run twice, that are sure to test both car and crew. Heading into this, the fourth round of the championship, it's Monaghan's Michael Carbon who leads the overall title race, ahead of local man Jared Lucy, with two-wheel drive leader John Gordon holding third in his Pinto-powered Mark II. Michael, round three, you took maximum points. Your championship is looking good. Yeah, yes, yeah, nice, all right. But at the same time, we're only halfway through. There's still four rounds to go, so there's a lot to play for, and there's a lot of boys there hard chasing hard behind me. So it's not nothing's sealed yet now. Jared, trouble in the tour this morning. I'm sure you're hoping for a smoother run here today. Yeah, hopefully we'll have a better run here today. Anyway, things didn't go our way up there, but sure, things can only get better now. Anyway, John, you're leading the two-wheel drive. Yes, for now, but I'd say that's all going to change today now in these stages. Why is confidence so low? Well, the confidence isn't low, but they're very fast-flowing stages, so we're going to get, the big cars are going to aid us today now. I think there's only one point between us, between myself and John Gordon, so the big push on today. The two-wheel drive, so exciting to watch out there. That's right, yeah, sure, it's all about a bit of crack, you know, and raising a bit of dust. In the junior class, Shane Keneally held a one-point lead over James Driver. Shane, leading the juniors, but there's tough competition in the juniors. Yeah, there's only a point in it now today, so we have to be on the ball. Desi Henry got the event off to a perfect start. Opening up a nine second lead after stage one, the Antrim driver had local man Liam Moynihan calling the notes in the Skoda Fabia R5, and the pair were 12 seconds to the good after stage two. Four right and line three left loose barrier inside lead in the four and line three left loose barrier inside going out take it on six day flat crest third day flat six left do not cut 200 flat six left over crest and flat dip through the junction 130 okay here slowing lead three left loose narrow laziness loose watches on the watches narrow and flat six right Easy. Dust was proving to be a major hindrance for the following crews, but despite this, Adrian Hetherington's second round in his Toyota Corolla was going well as he held second overall with navigator Gary Nolan. Fellow Tyrone crew Patrick O'Brien and Anya McGuigan were nine seconds further back in third, despite some brake trouble in their Mitsubishi Evo 9. Five right past the opening, 230 uphill. 
returning now to a lane, one left, uphill. 60 out of this here, one left. Too long, six right. Former champion Mick O'Brien was on the back foot after an overshoot in his ex-Josh Moffat Fiesta WRC. He and Liam Brennan were fourth after two stages. Cahan McCourt and Brian Hoy were pushing hard to hold fifth in their Evo 9. In 2010, champion Pat O'Connell and navigator Mark Wiley were just four tenths of a second further back in sixth. The Tipperary crew chatted with roving reporter Ida Doonan on the way to service. Ida, modern technology. Talk me through what you're up to there. It's a live YouTube feed. It is indeed. We're not completely live at the moment. We're hoping to get live maybe in the next couple of events, but at the moment we're trying to record sound bites and interviews of all registered competitors so they all get a little bit of coverage on Twitter and Facebook as well as on YouTube eventually as well. Current championship leaders Michael Carbon and Dara Kelly had a few overshoots in their Evo 4 and lay 7th overall in the increasingly difficult conditions. With visibility significantly reduced by the hanging dust, drivers were even more reliant on their navigators and Barry McNulty guided Mark Donnelly to 8th overall after two stages. 100, left on flat crest, 170 down the hill, all the way to a square right at the bottom. Turn square right, 100 from here, Mark, square right. The second Mark Donnelly competing in this event was just six seconds further back, with Stephen O'Hanlon calling the notes in the Evo 9. Keep in on this one right, 60. To the flat, 6 right, care, only 40. To the 2 left, tightens the hairpin left. 2 left here, tightens the very sudden hairpin left. The very sudden hairpin left, tidy. Don't cut it. And 80 up the middle. And it's very narrow here to the four right in and carry. In tenth overall, Martin Kearns was learning his new Fiesta WRC, but he hadn't banked on the amount of dust affecting visibility and breathability. Over crest, flat past the turbine, 130. Good lad, 130. Stay right for two left lane, flat, don't cut. 200. 200 now. Got a flat one left. 100. Huh? Why is there so much dust, sir? Just the nature of the stage, man. 150. Just outside the top 10 was the Evo 8 of local crew Jer Lucy and JJ Kremen. 12th overall and leading the two wheel drive section after two stages was the escort of David Crossan and Chris McSherry. David, are the cork roads suiting you? Yeah, well, it's a brand new engine, so it's the first time in it, so I'm taking my time just to get the feel of it. It's the first time I've sat in the car since May, so happy we're pacing the first two, just maybe push on a bit now. Trailing crossing by four seconds were defending two-wheel drive champions Mickey Conlon and Kieran McPhillips. Shane McGurr and Martin McGarty had been leading the two-wheel drive class in their starlet, but former champion McGurr explains how they dropped to third in class at the end of stage two. We were 15 seconds in the hedge in there. Oh dear. The square right just before the finish, we just come down to the two deep, didn't make it, and of course the thick Irish head thought last minute, oh, we'll make this, we'll make this, and <laughs> we didn't make it. So we dropped her into the shock and we had to wait for the marshal to push us out. Oh. John Gordon felt the stages wouldn't suit his less powerful Pinto engine and the current two-wheel drive championship leader was fourth so far in his escort. Seamus O'Connell's 2.5 litre machine was struggling for traction on the very loose surface. The Derryman was fifth in the two-wheel drive battle with Kerryman Brian Duggan navigating. Having damaged the drive shaft in his escort on stage one and spinning on stage two, David Condell was happy to make it back to service in one piece. The stages are fantastic, just as everybody's saying, the dust is a massive problem and visibility is zero, so I think it's a credit to everyone, we're all still here. We had a spin on the last stage and lost a considerable amount of time, but really, really happy to be still going. In the juniors, Adam Bustard and Aaron Johnson led the class in the Fiesta or 2T. Adam, you are our top seed in the junior division. How are you finding the roads, Mallow? Uh, I'm enjoying them very much so. Very good stages. A uh, bit of dust, but uh, I'm not complaining if the rain stays away. 20 seconds adrift in second were David and Andrew Beamish in the Opal Corsa. 
Junior Championship leaders Shane Keneally and Jer Connors were third so far after some costly slides and overshoots through the opening loop. Third in the Junior Championship, Stephen Dixon and Tommy Hayes were just one second further back in their Fiesta R2. Derek Mackerel and Dara Hayes had to contend with drive shaft trouble in the Nova, and they were fifth in class at the break. The ever entertaining Emmett Cronin led Class 9 on his home event, with Patrick Walsh calling the notes in the Mark II Escort. Repeat one right over crest, and one left, 60 crest, caution, one left, only 80 to 6 left. Only 80 to 6 left after this. Hot on their heels was the Vauxhall Nova of Rory Maguire and James O'Brien. So after a demanding morning for the crews, it was time to dust themselves down and take a breather as Olive caught up with rally leader Desi Henry. Desi, first on the road, that has to be an advantage with all that dust out there. Yeah, obviously it's helping us a bit. I think the, the stage times are really showing it, but, uh, but no, happy enough. They, it seems to be good grip and we're uh, getting plenty of tyre usage, so no, happy enough. And that's how the leaderboard looks after two stages, with Desi Henry leading ahead of a tight chasing pack. Well, we'll have to let the dust settle here in Mallow, as this championship is certainly heating up. But there's lots more action to come, so do join us after the break. The 2016 Valvoline Motorsport Ireland Forest Rally Championship in association with the following sponsors. Welcome back to Mallow County Cork for part two of the Jim Walsh Cork Forest Rally. The event is backed by local company Crafted Fitted Furniture and Joinery and Managing Director Paul O'Connor is thrilled to have the rally back in Mallow once again. It's absolutely fantastic to have the rally in Mallow. It's a great boost for the town, for the restaurants, hotels and so forth. It's fantastic to see the turn out here today. Leading from the front meant visibility wasn't as much of an issue for Desi Henry and Liam Moynihan, who extended their overall lead to 38 seconds after stages 3 and 4. Flat 6 left, 2.50. Flat 6 left, 2.50. 6 right over crest, you have 30 to in. 5 right over crest, oh, 6 right over crest, 5 right over crest, 6 to in. The rally organisers extended the gap between cars to two minutes, so visibility was significantly improved for the following crews. And Adrian Hetherington maintained second place in his Corolla. Adrian, you're holding second, but it's tough conditions out there. Yeah, it's very, very dusty and uh, very marbly as well up on top, you know, so it's hard to see in that dust. Holding third, Patrick O'Brien lost his brakes altogether for stages three and four. The margin to Hetherington, now 18 seconds. Trying to get the brakes back on now. The last two stages had no brakes at all, so maybe that's why I'm third, not braking. No brakes? I mean, do you think you'll get that sorted before the next loop? Aye, uh, the boys have it sorted here now. Just do the back now and we'll be hopefully sorted. Mark Donnelly climbed from eighth to fourth after stage three, only to retire his Subaru S9 WRC on the following stage. Mechanical trouble in the Evo 9 saw Pat O'Connell slip down the leaderboard and he decided to withdraw at service. OK, with just the final loop remaining, we turn to the class battles now and taking the class one win in the Honda Civic were Anthony Breen and Jill White. John Quill and Trisha Hogan took third in class two in the Peugeot 206. Jason Dixon and James Lowry were top registered Class 2 crew, finishing second to Martin O'Brien and Brian McCarthy in the Citroen C2 R2 Max. Six left over first, and 
flat dip through the junction, 150. 150. Three left loose here, Martin. Three left loose. US based driver Patsy Keenan finished fourth in class four with Michaela McGinn navigating in the Evo 9. So 170 out of this. Crest 80 with a tight four left down the bottom and she narrows oh, into a crest over the finish 250. Connor McCourt and Caelan McKenna were third in Group N and 17th overall in their Evo 4. Dubliners Stephen Cullen and Seamus O'Grady maintained their Class 4 points lead with the runner-up spot in Cork. Up to second on the points table were Class winners Ed Muldoon and Mark Byrne from Mayo. Local crew Danny Creedon and Irla McCarthy won Class 6 in their Subaru Impreza. Martin Kearns and Gary McElhinney scored second in Class 7 and seventh overall in the new Fiesta WRC. Mick O'Brien and Liam Brennan won Class 7 and finished 4th overall in another recently acquired Fiesta. Former Class 9 leaders Emmett Cronin and Podrick Walsh retired with a bad misfire in their Mark II Escort. Colm Kearns and Terence McCabe took 3rd in Class 9. Niall O'Sullivan and Sean O'Crowley brought their Citroen C2 to 2nd in Class. But taking the Class 9 win in their Vauxhall Nova were Rory Maguire and James O'Brien. Brian Little and Declan Casey took the runner-up spot in Class 10 behind Tom Murphy and John Lynch who were delighted to take the Class 10 win on their home rally. Very long four right, this goes on now, 60. One right into one left over crest over finish 100. And the Jenny boy! That's not me. Patricia Denning's debut rally netted fourth in Class 11F with Joe Downey calling the notes in the Opal Corsa. Third in Class was the Peugeot 206 of Chris Snow and Sean Brunton. Adrian Beatty and Declan Ryan took second in Class in their Honda Civic. But winning Class 11F was the Civic of Barry Mahan and Alton McGowan. Fitzgerald and Pierce Doheny had been leading Class 11R and 19th overall until the timing belt in their 1600cc escort failed on the final stage. Ray Benskin Sr. took third in Class 12 with Patter Walsh on the notes in the Pinto engine Mark II escort. Second in class were David Fitzsimons and Tommy Moynihan in the escort. Despite losing almost five minutes, changing a wheel on stage three, John Gordon and Thomas Wedlock still won class 12, but slipped from 17th to 33rd overall. This allowed Mickey Conlon and Keir McPhillips to overtake them in the two-wheel drive championship, and they finished third two-wheel drive and 12th overall. David Crossan led the two-wheel drive battle by three seconds going into the final stages, but the county down driver had to settle for the runner-up spot and tenth overall when Tyrone's Shane McGurr snatched victory by two seconds at the end of the day. Shane, home in first place in the two-wheel drive, you must be delighted. Ah, delighted now, we really give ourselves a lot of hard work today with going off on stage two and we lost 15 seconds. And we really put ourselves on the lot of pressure. Um, it was down to the last stage and we put a real ding-dong push on and <laughs> it worked now. 
Seamus O'Connell had led class 14 and held 14th overall, but he aggravated a back injury and retired. Taking the class 14 win and 13th overall were David Condell and Eugene McGrath. In class 15, it was a 1-2 for the McCann family, as James McCann took the runner-up spot in his Mitsubishi Evo 7, while his brother Paul McCann took the class win and 20th overall in the Escort Cosworth. It proved a dramatic finish in class 16, the junior class, as Derek Mackerel's Corsa once again succumbed to mechanical trouble. Adam Bustard's dominant drive came to an abrupt end when he rolled his Fiesta out of the rally on stage 5. As we can see from Patrick O'Brien's in-car camera. James Driver and Megan Conway maintained second in the Junior Championship with fourth place in Cork. Points leaders Shane Keneally and Jer Connors had to settle for third in class this time round. Second on the day but top registered junior crew were Stephen Dixon and Tommy Hayes in the Fiesta R2. Stephen, first home in the juniors, you must be absolutely delighted. Yeah, it's, it definitely is. That's the first time that we've We've been second a couple of times so far, but that's the that's the first one for us. So we're over the moon. It's only a third rally in the car, and we're definitely over the moon with it. Class winners on the day was car crew David and Andrew Beamish, who could even afford a little visit to the scenery in their Opel Corsa. Cahan McCourt had led class 20 and held fifth overall, but mechanical trouble on the final stage forced a disappointing retirement. Third in class 20 and eighth overall kept Jer Lucy and JJ Kremen second in the overall title race. Championship leaders Michael Carbon and Dara Kelly took second in class and sixth overall in their Mitsubishi Evo 4. Mark Donnelly and Stephen O'Hanlon took the class 20 trophy in fifth overall in their Evo 9. To the overall podium finishers now, and a final stage puncture demoted Adrian Hetherington and Gary Nolan to third place in their Toyota Corolla. Just two seconds ahead in the end, Patrick O'Brien overcame earlier brake issues to claim second overall with Navigator Anya McGuigan. But taking the win by over a minute at the end of the day was Antrim's Desi Henry, who led from start to finish with local man Liam Moynihan calling the notes in the Skoda Fabia R5. Desi, you led from the start. There really was no catching you. Yeah, we had a good consistent run today. Stages were brilliant. The weather held up was very, very warm all day. So, uh, no, very, very happy. And I say the team done a great job with the car. Again, never missed a beat. So, it's, uh, I know we're back on the tarmac next week, but it puts us in a good position for the Ulster. Patrick, home in second, what a result. Hi, good result for a break problem all day, so it's good to get the finish. Unfortunately, Adrian there, he should, probably should have got the second place, but I got a puncture, but hey, it can happen to anybody. Adrian, a very eventful uh, finish to the rally, but congratulations, coming home in third place. Yeah, what a good uh, what a good day now, but we're 19 up on Patrick O'Brien there, going into the last stage, and we got a puncture. But still a good points haul for the championship. I enjoyed it now, we're going well. Surprised myself at our pace, to be honest with you. Getting the hang of this car. And there's confirmation of the results, which sees Adrian Hetherington climb to third on the leaderboard, with Desi Henry up to fifth, but it's still Michael Carbon in pole position after four rounds. Despite the dust, Desi Henry negotiated these top-class stages superbly and takes maximum points. And we can see a great shake-up now in the overall championship leaderboard. But there are still three more rounds to be decided, so join us next time when we head to Enniskillen. We'll see you then.